she handled it pretty well, actually. She didn't like miss a beat; just rolled with it. Some people get weird about it. Yeah, these what are good you, potato wedges. Where did you get the potato wedges? The barbecue place. Oh, oh well, those about. people are ridiculously relaxed. They would play. Oh them. yeah, yeah. How did you say it? You just you just kind of go like, yeah, I'll, I'll just have that turbo sized, or you can say in a T turbo sized. And like the more confidence you have, the more they roll with it because they don't want to be like, oh, well, I'm sorry. You remember that one time that lady corrected you? <laughs> oh, oh, where yeah. was that? That was that was McDonald's. a Taco John's. No, 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 oh, that McDonald's? was a McDonald's and Lander. And she was like, uh, I'm sorry, we no longer offer turbo size. <laughs> As though you did once. <laughs> That's awesome. It really is an exercise in if you're just confident enough, people will feel like they need to play along. How did we start doing this? I think you started it. Was it? I think it was you. We were on the phone, right? Yes, we were on the phone. And I just did it? Yes. And then it just became a thing? Yeah. They were like, okay, what size for the combo? You were like, turbo size. I feel like people there work with you better on turbo size. Here they get confused. We have these restaurants here in Alabama called Milo's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't yeah, take you to Milo's. We Milo's. They've got like, goofy sauce. There's something weird about that. What their... do you mean goofy sauce? They're amazing. Well, that's, I, I don't mean bad sauce. I'm not anti-Milo. It's like this smoky flavor. It's got Worcestershire yeah. sauce in there or something. Worcestershire fire. No one knows how to they say don't. that. Let me do it. Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. <laughs> that, that sounded pretty good. I did it in Leeds, Alabama one time. I went in there and asked for turbo size, and they rolled with it so well that anytime I drive through Leeds, Alabama, I go by there, and, and I go to that specific that specific Milo's is great. I like it when you end up having a relationship with the people that you see in the drive through window frequently. I, I did the turbo size thing, I guess, before we started talking about that at Arby's. Whenever I'd order mozzarella sticks, I would do like the <laughs> hyper professional order. Hey, I'm Arby's going to take your order. Yes, I'll have a number, uh, number three combo with curly fries and a Coke. And then I will do a number four. And could I do mozzarella sticks for the side there? Yes, sir. You want any sauce? Yeah, we'll do marijuana sauce with that. You and always do also, marijuana sauce. Always marijuana sauce. I've I've heard you order <laughs> marijuana sauce like maybe two or three times. <laughs> Some people it's get pretty... all giggly and excited, <laughs> like I'm sending him a coded message. And some people are like, oh, this poor ignorant dad. He just doesn't know. <laughs> and then some folks just roll with it. And then every now and then people will repeat it back. All really? Right. Yeah. Uh, Six-piece order of mozzarella sticks with marijuana sauce. Is that everything? Yep. That was everything. What if one day you accidentally mess up and you say some coded message that means something? I'm sorry. I've got potato wedges in my mouth. <laughs> there was this gas station up the road, and the rumor as a kid, you know, on the school bus, yeah, was that if you went there and ordered a ham sandwich... And you ask for mushrooms on your sandwich. You got a five gallon bucket of meth? No, they'd give you magic mushrooms. That was the <laughs> that that was the rumor, you know. You remember rumors when you were a kid? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, all the ones about <laughs> don't flash your brights at people. Oh, they'll kill you. Yeah, it's a gang initiation, right? For <laughs> sure, definitely. And uh, the house that puts the razor blades in the apples at Halloween. All of yeah. that stuff. Gotta X ray this stuff. What how does that stuff happen? I don't the, know. The the flash in the lights thing that happened. Where you were at too, like, like pre-internet. Oh yeah, pre-internet, man. That made the rounds. It's just, it's contagious. It's viral. Some grandma mm -hmm. in in North Alabama picks up the phone, mm -hmm. and she calls like Aunt Sally Bet out in Wyoming. Sally, you're not gonna believe what they're doing down here. Well, I'll tell you what they're doing up here in Wyoming. They got these parties that the youngsters go to, and they drink their alcohol and whatnot, it's just as much <laughs> as they can drink now. And then these youngsters, they'll find themselves just passed out and they wake up the next day in a bathtub full of ice cubes with a note on them that says, go to the hospital, and they're missing their kidneys. <laughs> I've heard that one too. Yeah, I know you have. <laughs> so you got to look out for that at parties, man. People will get you liquored up and harvest your kidneys. How did that information spread before the internet? You know, I once planned to write a book called Glurge, colon, the worst of Christian email forwards. Why glurge? I don't understand the word. I don't know. It's a term that I heard once for awful email forwards. It was glurge. It was like a pre... It was back when the internet was just email, but you didn't really do anything else on it. Yeah. Back then, 
Christians would forward these awful emails all the time. Or uh, who knows, maybe they were malicious foreign actors. But the emails were always stuff like Madeline Murray O'Hare, who is, you know, the famous atheist who uh, addressed the prayer in schools issue. And I'm actually on her side on that. Madeline Mm. Murray O'Hare wants to have touched by an angel taken off of television <laughs> sign this petition and send it to your congressman except like all the congressmen they listed are dead and madeline murray o'hare had been dead for a decade or whatever not, touched by an angel was already off the air for five years like whatever it was it just wasn't even close to accurate but the same non-discerning people would forward you this stuff all the time there was one that was like well the people of the Middle East are celebrating America's invasion of Iraq because the Quran predicts that the great eagle from the West will come and crush Muhammad's offspring. Like, why would the Quran say that? That's the exact... Like, why would anyone sign up for a religion where you lose to some eagle? That sounds horrible. And so you go and look at the verse that it quotes. It's not even close to that. It's just completely fabricated, made up, crap but oh man people would forward that like crazy so i don't know i just think it's the glurge effect man people reproduce wild salacious things and that stuff has some uh, sticking power right this episode of no dumb questions is sponsored by audible you ready for another book kind of episode absolutely i am okay yeah how to think was great and we have we've tarried in getting the next one out it is time i i'm just gonna ask you to trust me on this one okay well, the book I feel like I do that a lot. I'm game. All right. <laughs> the book right. the book I'm about to suggest to you is a life-changing book for me personally. I'm not saying it's going to change your life, but it's literally changed my life and how I think. Um, Whatever you say next, I will read it. Okay. It's called The Sun Does Shine. It's by a man named Anthony Ray Hinton. L- 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 oh, you've mentioned this. Okay. L- let me okay. let me set the book up for you. So, please. Anthony Ray Hinton is a, a young man in Alabama. And uh, he, he's not the perfect dude. He's got some stuff going wrong in his life. He's done a couple of things he regrets. But at one point in time, he crosses the wrong person, and one thing leads to another, and they frame him for murder. And the justice system at the time was, uh, it, it left several things to be desired. And one thing leads to another. Anthony Ray Hinton is sentenced to death in the state of Alabama, my home state. And he, he stays on death row for almost 30 years. And what this book does is it gives you unfettered access to death row and what it's like to live on death row and what it's like to interact with other people who are on death row. And it's hmm. it's changed the way I think about everything, man. I, I wouldn't say everything, but, you know, it's I still think about the same things about laminar flow but for the most part that's important this has changed a lot about my life and possibly the trajectory of some things in my life so anyway i cannot recommend this to you enough matt the sun does okay well we're we're doing it yeah the sun does shine by anthony ray hinton yeah and and the thing about listening to this one on audible is that sometimes i listen to books at like one and a half x or two x Mm-hmm. But the the guy that's reading this uh, does such a great job reading it that he puts the right emotion where it needs to be. You, I, I read the whole th- or I listened to the whole thing at at one x. It was great. Anyway, so okay, yeah. So I would like to suggest that's our next book. And what if we do an episode in a couple of months uh, on this book? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We had a really good conversation in the in the very early going of this podcast that got into some death penalty stuff, but that conversation was very abstract. You know, we were talking about the big concept of it. We humanized it a couple times with examples, but it sounds like this goes way beyond the death penalty, not death penalty debate and into not just a study of justice, but a study of what it's like to be in that position. Am I hearing you right? Yes. Yes. How do you keep your soul in the midst of incredible injustice? For 30 years. For 30 years. and I can't imagine. I can't. Well, I can because I've read the book, and he, he gives me a, a look into that that part of the world. And, and it sounds like something you're like, oh, I don't okay. want to read that, but it's it's worth it. We're going to do it. So to get this, you can get this audio book, The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton, for free 
when you try Audible for 30 days by going to audible.com slash NDQ, or you can text NDQ to 500-500. You get the book for free. And uh, I'm telling you, dude, it's, uh, it's a game changer. So, yeah. Okay, so again, first audiobook is free. When you try Audible for 30 days, you go to audible.com slash NDQ, or you can text NDQ to 500, 500, and then the whole thing just works out on your phone. Am I getting that right? Yep, that's right. And, and I highly suggest listening to this book on Audible because the, the voice actor is incredible. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, thanks for considering letting me pick this book. I know it's very different. Did you expect me to go science next? I kind of did, if I'm to be honest. Yeah, but this is uh, this is pretty humanities ish, and I like it. And you're already making my wheels spin as to what what I need to pick next. The, I, so, I'll just give you one hint about the book. There's this one guy in the book. It's his friend. Um, he has this friend in the book that believes him and never questions him. And the things that this this friend does over these years is incredible. And, and to me, he's the unsung hero of the book, but he's just casually mentioned. And what's so great is, uh, well, I, I don't want to spoil it. At the end of the book... Yeah, I feel like you're tiptoeing up to that right now. Yeah, okay. I, I won't. Tread carefully, friend. It, Tread carefully. Anyway, that's I'm it. excited for the book. I'm sold. The sun does shine. Anthony Ray Hinton. Looking forward to it. Okay. Okay. And just once again, the last time we talked about Audible, we mentioned the Audible original things that, that they were putting out. And my understanding is that, you know, in addition to the one credit you get every month with Audible as being a member there, you also get access to two Audible originals, but those are always turning over. So they're doing new stuff. And they're also making those increasingly customized for each individual member so that you're seeing more on that Audible original list that's right up your alley. So if that's something you've checked out in the past, uh, it seems like it's worth revisiting now as they continue to tweak that. Oh, yeah. I, I love having an Audible subscription because I'm like, oh, dude, it's credit time, and I can go pick out a book that somebody tells me about. Yeah, likewise. I almost went Seven Eves with my, this recommendation, but I, I think this one's this one's what we're, where we need to go. I'm still interested in Seven Eves, so let's not table that conversation entirely, or I should say let's revisit that at some point. Whatever the case, if you're sitting here listening to something like this, you probably like audiobooks. We like audiobooks. Audible.com slash NDQ or text NDQ to 500, 500 to get going on this thing. Dude, I'm so pumped for this conversation. I am too. That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm most excited about here. This is, this is going to be great. Yeah, I am too. And you're the friend that I want to process stuff like this with. So I'm glad we're doing it. Yeah, man. Sweet. Let's get back to it. All right. Hey, you remember a few months ago when we got to the end of the year and we were talking about those Spotify annual playlists? Oh, yeah. I, I'm still keeping mine up. You got yours? Oh, absolutely. And you remember how it was complete radio magic for the third chair? Oh, uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> well, I would. I'd go further if I could think of words. Okay. <laughs> yeah, words are your superpower, I, so anyway, go ahead. I think one of the funnest things in the world is sharing music with people. Did you did you swap mixtapes with people? Remember we talked with Emily Grassley about swapping mixtapes at camp? Did you do that? Not really. I recorded stuff for myself. and So you were just very, very alone as a young person. Crippling loneliness, I would say. Oh, <laughs> no. That's the worst kind. <laughs> no. No, I, but I didn't share mixtapes. No, I think, I mean, we, we did DV, DV, well, not these. We did mix CDs, which I know is different than your generation. No, it's the exact, it's the exact <laughs> same thing. I know. I really did experience both, though. I got mixed discs and I got mixed tapes. But even then, nobody said mixed discs. What is that? Well, I think the problem is it's mixta- it's Na- Napster happened like right when I got to, to school. <laughs> yes, it did. And as soon mm-hmm. as as soon as Napster hit the scene, I think that changed that because all of a sudden everybody could have every piece of music they yep. wanted, and yep. it, it wasn't as sacred. It, it kind of devalued because supply went up, demand went. I don't know. I think that, that, that's exactly what happened. And it also scrambled who sang what because there were all kinds of those Napster files that got mislabeled by somebody. Oh, yeah. For example, all college acapella music in the early 2000s when that genre was catching on was labeled rockapella. Do you remember rockapella? Oh, yeah. What, do you, what the heck? Do we even know each other? Do, of course I know rockapella. I feel like we do. Really? Okay. From what, Mr. Smarty Smart? Obviously, Carmen Sandiego. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. But 
There's a new Netflix series with Carmen Sandiego, and they don't have the song. It's awesome. What are you doing? I don't know, but it's awesome. Well, I mean, Rockapella was, I mean, that was a big deal And Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. Do you know the words to that Carmen Sandiego song? Do you remember any of that? Uh, London to Belize. That's really all I remember. Uh, she went from somewhere to somewhere, then down to Zimbabwe. Did she yeah, go to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe yep. maybe yep. in that song? Exactly. Da, 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 Czech, Slovakia, and back. Yeah. I remember that part. Yeah. Do you... um? Do you listen to They Might Be Giants? Yeah, absolutely. Have you heard the Alphabet of Nations? No. No, I haven't, and I feel bad. What? Have you how have you not heard this? Just right now, Alphabet of Sometimes Nations feels like They Might Be Giants. Me. Okay, I'm on it. I am judging you. Oh well, thanks for just owning it, man. They might be giants did the theme from Malcolm in the Middle, didn't they? I don't know, but they did Particle Man. They did Particle Man, but most importantly, they covered Istanbul and Constantinople. Yep. It's a very important song for people. Here's the alphabet of nations. You ready? Oh, 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 oh. please proceed. Algeria, Bulgaria, Cambodia, Dominica, Egypt, France, the Gambia, Hungary, Iran, Japan, Kazakhstan, Libya, and Mongolia, Norway, Oman, Pakistan, Russia, Suriname. Wait, this they're missing one. You skipped Qatar. S T. It's got to be. No, no, no. Is there not? It's Qatar. Oh yeah, Pakistan. Qatar, Russia, Suriname, Turkey, Uruguay, Vietnam, West Xylophone, Yemen, Zimbabwe. Wait, 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 wait. What was X? West Xylophone. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Can you do the uh, the Animaniacs Countries of the World song? No. I I hear people reel that off from time to time, but that just was not. My brother could knock that out. He, He was really a big fan of the Animaniacs. Yeah. Pinky in the Brain, awesome. all of that stuff. but uh, Like, just straight up, he could just start it and do it? I think so, man. I don't, do you have any song you can do that with beyond the One Cake song and what you just did on the Alphabet of Nations thing? I can do Handlebars by Flowbots. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can. I play it for my children, and it's a really good song. It's a really good song. Yeah. For example, my daughter, she has been reading a lot this year about the Holocaust, like Anne Frank and stuff like that, and... I played the song for her back in the day, and she's like, oh, that's interesting. And I played it for her a couple months ago, and she said, why is he talking about the Holocaust at the end? I was like, well, she, he's not talking about the Holocaust. He's talking about a Holocaust. And we're starting at the beginning of the beginning of this person's life, and they, they have this selfish ambition and pride. I can ride a bike with no handlebars, you know? And then it it, it kind of slowly amplifies and and goes up i mean have, do you know the song yeah yeah I, I love the song what's your favorite part of the song how did you say it i can control a nation with a microphone i can lead a nation with a microphone with a microphone yeah that plucks some of my libertarian strings really yeah yeah what do you mean I mean, one of the things that I am most passionate about is pushing back on the human impulse to control other people. What a concise way to talk about how the right platform and the right words and you can move people toward things that they would probably never do left to their own ends. Yeah, I mean, he that, that's the moment where he consolidates power, right? Mm-hmm. Before that point in the song, he's talking about all the things he can do and accomplish on his own. And it's like, oh, look at me. I'm capable and I... I can make a computer survive aquatic conditions, all this stuff. Yeah, and it's nice. Yeah, it's cool, but I can do it. You know, it's it's that, is the word hubris? Mm-hmm. Is that the word? Hubris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and then that moment that you're talking about right there, I can lead a nation with a microphone, that's the, that's the pivot moment of the song for me because that's the moment where it, quit, it quits becoming about my ability to overcome things in physical space and to arrange rocks in clever ways, at that moment, I can lead a nation with a microphone. That's when it becomes external, and it's about, like, the power. How can I can, how can I make these other humans think about me in a different way? I mean, I just think it's a really deep song, dude. Uh, yeah, and I really like the way it sounds, which is important for me when picking music. <laughs> Speaking of that, what what sounds are on your 2019 playlist for Spotify? This is a good year, man. Sometimes I'll get into... June, and I just then get cracking on my playlist for the year because it's winter, and it's kind of dismal, and I don't feel energized. But you know the difference between a February playlist and like a summer playlist? It, it, oh yeah, there's energy in the summer playlist, right? 
Yeah. Well, that is what I've been experiencing. Let me pull this thing up. I have found some really fun stuff. Oh, I've got the email here. So this is, this is your playlist right here. Yeah, I just shared the link with you. You got it there? Oh, I like I like the cover art. Okay, yeah, and you see how how much of that cover art looks like the first iteration that we came up with of History Nugget with all the pinks and purples and kind of 80s look? Yeah, it does. Miami Vice feel going on? Yeah, everybody did that in 2018, and everybody is doing it in 2019, mm. kind of riding the Stranger Things wave. But dude, there is this whole genre of almost like 80s soundtrack music that is gaining popularity. And once you start going down that rabbit hole, you discover it's not like one or two artists who are like, oh, I could use these, I could use retro style sounds and musical structure, but I could do it with all the technology of now. It's not, it's not one or two bands who figured this out. It's like dozens. You've got Mumford's and, Mumford and Sons here. They, they do it? Uh, no, 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 no. This whole playlist isn't that. I'm just saying right here at the top, uh, Gunships, the video game champion. Give that, a, give that a listen. See how it makes you feel. All right, here we go. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a commercial. I love it. Perfect. It's got that ding ding. It feels like I'm. It feels like I should jump at the end of the of the sitcom and like pump my fist in the air. And then the credits scroll by very very fast. Yeah, it's got that guitar in it. Yeah, I love that guitar. Again, this isn't what I want 24-7 all the time, but it's been very fun cheesy. this year. Yeah, I know. And that's the joy of it, is that it hmm. was cheesy because it's indicative of a simpler time. You had 60s music and 70s music where people started trying to say stuff with their rock. Right. They were mad about things and they resisted authority. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. Even if I didn't agree with what authority they were resisting, still... It was, nah, the establishment sucks, and we're going to push back on it. Like some Credence Clearwater Revival kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Fortunate Son is one of the best songs ever. But then in the 80s, music went mainstream. It was commodified, and very few bands that people know about or remember were really making big political points. How many can you think of from the 80s that are you know big political point protest kind of songs? Mm, not many. Not many. Maybe like uh, Beds Are Burning by Midnight Oil. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm i not listening to you anymore because I saw Eye of the Tiger on this Speaking playlist. Speaking of 80s, yeah, go ahead and give that a listen. Is this a cover? It is, and it's really neat. Butch Walker, Eye of the Tiger. Change your passion for your glory. Yeah, but it's all funky-like, isn't it? What is this? Yeah, it's old and weathered. So just let that roll for a minute, rounding out that thought. So 80s music is cheesy and that's kind of the fun it's like this hokey wink wink ah. we all know that we're into things that are probably darker and more complex than this but let's take one more run at mild youthful teenage innocence before we wander out into what i think is a darker era of music that's happened since and now oh my goodness come on rock protest something again the things that people write music against now, it's the safest stuff in the, the safest opinions you can possibly have. That's what like people what? pass off as being edgy. I'm not going to get baited into that. Stuff that is, <laughs> stuff that is morally obvious right, about how to right. treat people who are different than you. People sing these songs and act like it's this profound thing. Well, obviously don't be horrible to people. That's all you got? Come on, somebody get mad at the government and not just half of the government somebody get mad at all of the government again give me some songs about that where you yell we about should, how dumb that is we should do a podcast we yeah we podcast. should <laughs> wait wait because we're so different and you love all the music now yeah that's right that's right i'll just i'll just just jump right on that yep oh you so, know what speaking of bands who do still complain about authority from all sides and understand what rock is supposed to be you know i like muse check out that next song on the playlist what <gasps> oh it's so good oh wow and they nail the guitar this is what that song should have been do you remember hungry like the wolf i mean it, it yeah. predates me a little bit too but you remember hearing it when you were a kid i i'm sorry my i'm having issues with the volume control here i can either have all of the music or none of the music woman well, you want <laughs> me can you give me a sign wow they nailed it they were going for a legit cover yeah it's not ironic no. This song could be cool. Let's make it such. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. 
I'm really happy you liked that. I do. Yeah. I'm playing that song a lot right now. Okay. Check out You Worry Me by Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats. Is this new music? Yeah, it's new music. I'm so glad we're getting away from all the crap that new music was. Yes. Thank you. This gives me hope. Yes. I mean, the top 40 is a wasteland. Yeah. It's like what you see on the horizon in Mad Max Fury Road. Just don't go out there. There's nothing useful happening. Well, was it you telling me that the reason the top 40 is always like that is because you have to buy your way into it? That is was correct. That you? you buy yeah. it. If you see any list almost anywhere that says top 20, well, top 20 what? At least top 40 says according to airplay. But how right. do you get airplay? Is it demand? You pay for it. Nah, you pay for it. Dang. The Barnes & Noble top 10 that was an indicator of popularity for the longest time was literally just a pay-to-play. Really? You buy a position and all the different labels bid against each other, and whoever bids highest gets the number one spot. That's how you go to number one. Okay, so that makes me sad. So let's go back to the music part that makes me happy. Okay, so... are you ready for crazy happy? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I'm about to make your life beautiful. Bring it. Scroll down about 15 songs mm-hmm. to a song called Thunder in the Night by... Cats in Space. Love it already. Here we go. Whoa, it starts with lasers in my ears. It has lasers. Okay, that's a that's a bass. Bass with a pick. <laughs> this is what we're doing. We're going backwards. The, the pendulum is swinging. Because stuff was rad in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, it was. People were goofy and stupid. They understood that they were kind of a joke. As rock stars? You feeling that? Is it getting into the galloping horse part? I like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> what is that? What is that? is what I'm thinking about. <laughs> That's pretty good. I am very pleased with what I've heard so far. I Okay, let it get to the course. Let it get to the course. You got to hear this part. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on to When Doves Cry. So, oh, oh, okay. I can't argue with you. Whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard this. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. Mandolin, When Doves Cry. Yes, it's, pr- oh, it's, it's a Prince song. It's an upright bass, though. Isn't that beautiful? Dun, dun. And a kiss. Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. Okay, here comes another one. Um, Check out Rainbow in the Dark by Liliac. Rainbow in the dark. That doesn't work, by the way. You have to have light for rainbows. I know, but that's the irony. Don't you get it? Whoa. This band, they're all kids. The youngest member's got to be like 11 or something, looking at them. Lead singer's got to be 18, 19. I don't know if they're a family. The song is by Dio originally. (gasps) How about that voice on that kid? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. (laughs) Pretty good. Can, can I? We interrupt this this playlist by Matt Whitman to bring you important news in what, what? the Notum Questions podcast world. <sighs> you sitting down? Yeah, I mean, I always sit down when we record. What what happened? Sabaton has released a new song. <gasps> What's it about? The Bismarck. Have I sang the Bismarck to you from Johnny Horton? No, but I was going to guess it was by Johnny Horton. If you know a song and it's about war, it's either the Wayne Tassars or a Johnny Horton song. I need you to understand the mental place that the Bismarck holds in my life. Granddaddy taught me how to drive in a pasture, and there was an 8-track player in, in this Datsun B2. No, that was in the Cadillac. Sorry. Th- there was an 8-track player in a vehicle with my granddaddy, and I learned how to drive, right? All right. We would, we would drive all over North Alabama, and I would listen to Johnny Horton's greatest hits, specifically a few a few songs, Battle of New Orleans, and then... And then the Bismarck was the one, right? Have you ever heard the Bismarck by Johnny Horton? No, I don't. I don't think I have. In May of 1941, the war had just begun. The Germans <laughs> had the biggest ships that had the biggest guns. The Bismarck was the fastest ship that ever sailed the sea. On her decks were guns as big as deers and shells as big as trees. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> it was wonderful. It was. I mean, it's awesome. 
Like, I know the whole thing. I can always tell when you're impersonating Johnny Horton, too, because you have one specific voice. I can picture your face <laughs> with the three or four chins <laughs> because you're tucking it Same. back to sound deeper like Johnny Horton. It's, it's great. <laughs> no, Johnny Horton had good range. He could do things like this with his voice. And right there, I could picture you wiggling your fingers on both hands because there was an electric guitar scream <laughs> in the background of whatever you did right there. <laughs> But the, the the point is Sabaton, right? Yeah, wasn't well, that the point of everything? The Bismarck holds a special place in my heart. You you know about the Bismarck, right, Mr. History? Can, do you want to just give the third chair a rundown on what the Bismarck is? Uh, it's a great big giant Nazi battleship that uh, it sank, sank the, the hood. hood. I think the Nazis scuttled it to avoid it being captured. I think that was the fate of the Bismarck, if I recall. But the, the battle with the hood, yeah, that's kind of the legendary thing. Yeah. But the thing was, it was a thing. Like, the big, the Bismarck was on the sea, and everybody's like, well, the Bismarck is out there. Holy cow. You know, that thing is a tiger, and if we go out in the jungle, we're going to die. Like, the Atlantic was just, everybody was scared of the Bismarck. And then, according to Johnny Horton, Churchill told the people, put every ship a sail. <laughs> you don't, you've never heard the song. Because no, somewhere on that ocean, I know she's got to be. We're going to sink the Bismarck to the bottom of the sea. So anyway, it's this epic ballad. Well, Sabaton came out with a song about the Bismarck. Okay. And the video is amazing. These dudes, I mean, Sabaton, just, we've got to go to a Sabaton show, dude. We have to. We need to join Sabaton. I'm not (laughs) a terrible guitarist. I could improve a little bit. I, I have nothing to offer Sabaton. <laughs> I'll play the kazoo, the cowbell, the juice harp, any, whatever they want. I'll do it. The way it starts is they show up, like in the video, they show up at this fishing village and they walk up and they like do this knowing glance at this fisherman kind of guy. And he's like, yeah, that's the boat over there. And then they go unload all their band gear into the back of this fishing boat. Okay. And they have lights and and spotlights and everything. And it is one of the best music videos I've ever seen in my entire life because he's on the okay. back. You've seen the lead singer with the little mohawk thing. Oh, yeah. And he's like... It's how he should look. And he's got this clenched fist at all times and he's raising it in the air and shaking as he's screaming into the mic with the other one. And like, Yeah, because he won't let the heroes of the past be forgotten. No, he won't. And then- <laughs> Valor lives forever. So anyway, they sing this amazing song about the Bismarck and there's all this CGI of like an actual naval battle and they, they miss, you know, some of the... Some of the weapon stuff in the video is not correctly portrayed, and that bothered me a little bit. But still, it's amazing. I don't know. Go to YouTube. You, I need you to have this right now. No, it ain't there. Okay, heading to YouTube. Oh, yeah, this is cool. They're playing on that boat. Oh, there are lights. Oh, my goodness. Oh, There's just wait fire. till nighttime. It's an amazing video. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> I don't feel like these guys take themselves too seriously. But also, just this is what rock is. You just go real hard, and we're going to go real hard. And if that makes us look dorky, who cares? And then it works. It wears you down. Uh, y- oh, that's you're, cool. You're going to be on record saying that the Sabaton guy looks dorky? It's ridiculous. It's- I mean, they're all dressed up in camouflage and smashing around with lasers and fire. Like that's the kind of stuff where if you just add a unicorn, it's a meme. <laughs> but there is no unicorn, and I don't care. It works. This is the kind of this is one of those things, man, where if you're going to go full in on something like this, it had better work, or you're going to look like an idiot. And it works, and they don't look like idiots. I I need to visit Sweden. I finished doing this thing on the social media thing, and I met Sebastian. He's from Sweden. He was cool. Yeah. Sabaton's from Sweden. I bet Sabaton would put us up, man. I would just call them. They got couches. Yep. Just just break lock here. Let's go back to your playlist. Is that what we're doing? Or can I show you my playlist? I'm not quite done. I have a few more things I'd like to highlight about what's happening Mm -hmm. with 2019 music. Okay. You got to check out The Devil's Bleeding Crown by Volbeat right above. (laughs) I think they're Danish. It's kind of Sabaton cred. What? I can't tell if it's Satanism or a really, really good point about human evil. (laughs) My, I choose to think the latter because it's catchy. You have too many songs in your playlist. I can't. No, I don't. No, stop that. It's April. I have so much time to fill this up. Do you go back to the playlist and and listen to all of this? Oh, yeah, all the time. This is just what I run all of 2019. But, My playlist strategy is that I fill it with music throughout the year that I like, 
and I listened to it all year, fishing, hiking, working out in the backyard, whatever. And then, and then I, I remember my brain connects that music with the memories from 2019 so that 2019 has this distinctive flavor in my brain because the soundtrack triggers something in your memory. And it's one of the tricks that I use to keep all of adulthood from just mushing together. Even it helps me keep straight memories with the kids. Because I remember when they hear these songs and they get into them and I kind of remember what age they were and what we were doing. And so it's, it's very intentional that nothing from the 2018 playlist bleeds into the 2019 playlist or in any direction. Got it. I'm playing it now. Okay. When you have more time, check out Sea Waves cover of With or Without You. Mm-hmm. By you too, mm-hmm. but it's one that you just have to listen to the whole thing in its entirety. Are you talking about the it's a, with or without you? Exactly that. That <laughs> was that Bono. Is he at your house? He's right here. Hey, was I don't even know what Bono sounds like. So <laughs> I, mean, I have no idea what Bono <laughs> sounds like. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm stupid. Okay, go down two more to uh, your song by Ellie Goulding. Your song. She's great. It's a cover of the Elton John song. Oh. Oh, that's good. I love her voice. I'm kind of obsessed with her style. Feels like she she means it. Really? And I don't know if she means it or not, but that that's really important to me. Some people I feel like they get into the they get into a song and then they sing the words that were written down in order with the correct notes, and that's nice. But her her voice kind of makes me feel a little bit like uh, nothing compares to you. Oh, Sinead nothing O'Connor. Nothing compares to you. That's what that I mean. Personally, I, I'm a fan of Elton John singing that song, but but yeah. I, I do I do agree she has a great voice. Africa by Ninja Sex Party, I, I agree. <laughs> oh oh oh, there's one more. It's up at the top. It's uh, 15 in. You have to listen to it, and then I'm done with mine. Okay. And I look forward to hearing yours. It's by White Lies. The song is called Tokyo, and I think this is going to be my 2019 song. What? It's so good. Okay, here it feels here like Alphaville, like like Forever Young, Alphaville. You oh, getting that? what a weird start. Whoa. This is your 2019 song? I think it's my 2019 song. I just love it. Really? It's hard for me to understand what they're saying. Who cares? The, the music is awesome. I just don't connect with the lyrics. And for me, that's that's it's like super important is to connect with the lyrics. That one, that one stands out to me. I think it's wonderful, and if it's not your favorite, I don't mind. Okay, let's hit up your playlist. What do you got? I'll make mine quick because you're way better at music than I am. I'm excited for that. I've hogged it long enough. But before we do that, let's take a quick second to say thank you to the patrons. Big thanks to the patrons. I just want to say that. Can I, can I just say that randomly? Yeah, I'm glad we say it a lot. Yeah. I still feel like saying it a lot doesn't properly convey how much it's appreciated. But you always say that Patreon's a goodwill engine. And that's how it feels. It is. Yeah. Thanks for the additional fuel, people that are are filling up our tank. We appreciate that. Yeah. No kidding. Patreon.com slash no dumb questions, right? Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. It's appreciated. Okay. Do you see my playlist? Do you have it there? Yours opens with Battle Hymn, like Battle Hymn of the Republic, the CU Buffs fight song, like, mine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out Play the it. vintage where the grapes it, of wrath are stored. It's by I almost had that John Batiste. Okay, I'm listening to but it, it now. it starts very different than what you're thinking. What is going on? It's awesome. It's awesome is what's going on. Isn't that good? Oh. Yeah. Isn't that good? Did I bring something pretty for you, Matt? Yeah, this is neat. It's awesome. You just wait till the the vocals come in, and I say vocals. Isn't that beautiful? This is pretty cool. Oh yeah, I get amped, dude. Boy, that is that is nuts. It, in a good way. It's a collision. Of about a gazillion styles. I, That's pretty cool. I love the the soul feel to it. Yeah. It's beautiful. I like it. Okay, so there's that. I'm not going to play too many of these for you because I don't want to... I mean, you have very good taste in music. So, um, Wait, here, you get a cover of I Believe in a Thing Called Love? Uh, yeah, that's, oh, that is I have this bluegrass. Cover. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's I good. forgot I had this. So move down. It's great. Move down to Glass Castle by Tavana. Things ain't or t- making me feel. That's nice. Okay, so Glass Castle mm-hmm. by Tavana. I'm there. Tavana. So let me explain this one to you. Okay, can I listen to it while so, you talk? Because I'm, I'm I don't want to pause. Yeah. It. Okay, go. Mm-hmm. So um, I went to Hawaii for that missile test. Right. right. Yeah. And while we were on the island waiting to transition out we went to this art festival. Anytime there's a local art festival and we see it, we're like, oh, we're totally going to that. And we went and we saw a bunch of neat, you know, art of waves and stuff. And there's this guy playing. Clearly, he's a local artist and he's playing on the stage. And I hear a banjo in just an unbelievable way. I've never heard it played quite like this. And so I walk up and it's this guy, Tavana. Every instrument in this song, he's playing himself. Really? He's doing all of this. Yes. Wait, at once? I saw, like a one-man band with a giant thing strapped to his back and maybe everything. a monkey assistant? He's doing all of this at one time. Dang. Um, yeah, it's great. So anyway, um, I, I want you to listen to that on your own later if you're into it. But okay. uh, just fast fast forward to the end. Fast forward to the end. And just I listen. Have the listen to the, the end. Hear how fast it's going? Oh, whoa, yeah. That has a little bit of a Rodrigo y Gabriella feel to it. Yeah, but do you hear him just wailing on that banjo? Oh yeah, playing a ba- playing a banjo like a classical guitar. I'm tapping my foot, man. It's working. Yeah, and well, because he was tapping his foot. Okay, that was that. All right, moving on. It can't just um, be my I've idea got... to tap my foot. It can't just be my idea to tap my foot. <laughs> Can I have this <laughs> one thing? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, he um, was doing. Okay. So, Okay, what do you okay got? so this song, the very last song on the playlist, mm, this Temptation. Is cool. So this song, Temptation by Ravina, I think you'll like it because I know you like really high voices and really deep music. You're so right. Have we talked about that? Yeah. Yeah, we have. Oh, okay. I was going to say, that, like, dang, dude. That's next level friendship to know stuff like that. Yeah. But if we've talked about it, it is. it's still good that you know. But so, so I was at a coffee shop, and they used they were playing this and I was like, whoa, this is interesting. And the reason I think it's interesting is because she's singing just a little bit out of time with the music. And and the message that sends when she does that is, you know, I don't really care to get this perfect because it's a lazy day and everything's chill. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And so anyway, that's why I like that. And so after I work really hard on something and I need my brain to chill, I play that song. Um, and then I, I just got two more, and then I'll I'll let you I'll let you back to your. Yeah, this reminds me of that American Boy song by Estelle and Kanye, which I also liked. I'm enjoying that. No, um, I'm kind of just real slow, like bobbing my head forward and back. Yeah. Do you think I'm doing that because she was doing that, or do you think that was my own idea? I think I think. She was the one that made you do that. I don't think you did that on your give own. Give me this one thing. Just give me this one thing. <laughs> Go to Prayer in C. Got it. I'm I'm going to do three more if that's cool. I'm going to do it quick. Prayer in C. This is an instrumental song. No, it's not instrumental. There's actual music in it or singing in it. Like this is an excellent running song. Wow. Your playlist is, a, I mean, we're into a lot of the same things in life, but your playlist is very different than mine. Yeah. But I like it. Yeah, th- this is music ooh, that... Ooh, like the voice. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, that is working for me. I think it's really cool. So there's that. And then two more songs and I'm out. So scroll okay. up to... Yep, Homestretch, Mountain Song, Little Chief. Okay. Um, so it's it's just really good instrumental. There's some, there's some sawing on a fiddle in there kind of stuff. Or I guess it's a wait, cello. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, somebody's playing a saw? No, sawing on a fiddle. That's... Oh, okay. Because I know a dude who played a saw. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, all the time. It, it was pretty cool. Mountain Song by Little Chief. It kind of ramps up slowly, and then at about 2.20 in the song, they pop the bubble, and then you get this real earnest feeling mountain voice that just I resonate with. Two thirty is where the music commands. I'm gonna jump ahead to that. I, I love this. 
Hit hit time out on that song because I don't want to spend too much of your time. And then this what? is uh, we're gonna. I kinda don't want to wait. Where do I pop the bubble? Uh, it's at two thirty. Give me a second. I want to drink that in. Oh. Oh, I, I oh, I just love it. And then it ramps up at the end again, and then they just go, oh, like, they, there's a lot of that at the end. It's really good. Oh, and here's what's nuts, man. This is by Little Chief. I don't know anything about them, but this is this mountainy folk acoustic song, and it's connecting with me the same way a UK pop star in Ellie Goulding com- connects with me. It just feels like they mean it. Yeah. And even if you mean something that I'm not really into, because I don't think anything that she thinks about the world. And I don't know what these people think. I don't care. Just don't lie to me. Or no, 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 not even don't lie to me. That's a negative way to say it. Let me frame it positively. Just tell me the truth. Not the manipulative truth, not the gaming me truth. Just tell me the truth about how you see it. and Do it beautifully and you will move my heart. And that is how I feel right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Oh, and they just stepped it up. Wonderful. Yeah, it's really neat. Great recommendation. Okay, in my my last song, that Okay, okay. It's it's between it's between Mountain Song by Little Chief and um this next one may be my song of the year. Okay. And it's Forest. So, Reliant K, um there's a the lead singer Matt Thiessen. I thought I knew the name. Yeah. Okay. He he's got another band called Matt Thiessen and the Earthquakes, and this song Forest you know, in Disney's version of Robin Hood, you know the um, Robin Hood led something yep. in the forest, run through the forest, laughing back and forth at what the other one has to say, reminiscing this and that, and having such a good time. Oodle ollie ollie golly, what a day! That song. Oh, it's not like that. It is that. No. So the point of this song is this is what happened before that part of Robin Hood. So this is him singing with Maid Marian. Oh. So you got the horn in there. So yeah. so when the female vocals come in, it just like kind of takes you by surprise. It's like yeah. it's like whoa, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to feel that beautiful in a song, you know? Hmm. And so it's this it's this feeling of Robin Hood, all he's got is, you know, his merry men in the, in the forest. He doesn't have worldly possessions, but he's he's got the the eye of this lady and and that's all that matters to him. And and they're singing back and forth. It's just a really good feel. I like it. I like it too. Yeah. So for me, it's either between Forest or Mountain Song. Uh what is it for you? We might have to check back in on that in terms of a groove and a feel. I love that Tokyo song by White Lies. Yeah. In terms of, well, it depends on if you count this as 2018 or 2019, but Pressure and Hungry Like the Wolf by Muse. I don't know, but see, now you got me in a different state of mind because you played me that that mountain song, Little Chief thing. It was wonderful. I think the upshot for me is that I was feeling really discouraged about new music. Really discouraged. And I was like... Could it be that I'm wrong? No, the kids are wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I was, I was, no, I'm right. Everyone else is wrong. I was having that feel. And then, well, I think 2018 was just a crappy year. But, but this is, I feel like we've turned a corner musically. And this is certainly not my mind. It's, it must be everything else about the world changed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> everything else is a projection. Actors on my stage in my play. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I do think it's rounded the corner. I had an incident the other day. I mean, I, I got my little, you know, my little recording and editing area set up, and I have really nice sound on that. And sometimes I'll just push back from the editing and work on my playlist. That's what I do in between stuff. And I came across this cover of Fields of Gold by, I think it's by Sting, right? You remember that one? No. da 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 Upon the fields of is it barley, to forget the sun in the jealous sky, as we walk in fields of gold. That one? 
Uh, no. <laughs> no, but I, I enjoyed hearing you <laughs> sing it. I felt like it was one of those where you just keep hacking through it and eventually he'll recognize it. But Nope, still dumb. I'm still dumb. <laughs> you made me go all the way through <laughs> that sorry. stanza. Okay, there is this cover by Drew and Ellie Holcomb of Fields of Gold. So I put this song on and immediately I connect with it. I'm in this place emotionally and I... Oh, wait, wait, wait no, 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 no. No, that song softened me up for the song that actually pushed me over the edge and that one was can't help falling in love with you the old elvis song but it's the way it was covered on crazy rich asians that's the one so i put that song on and all of a sudden i get transported to this hyper emotional place it triggered nostalgia it triggered sadness about the end of youth joy at remembering the beauty of youth and love. It made me think about savoring the good things that I have in my life right now. Then it made me think of my wedding day and my beautiful wife and how it felt seeing her walking down the aisle and what our relationship has been since and all the good stuff there. And then for whatever reason, the image of dancing with my daughters at their wedding someday popped into my mind and that was just more than I could handle. That's good music. It is. When it comes, I'm feeling it right now again. I mean, makes you feel things. Yeah, but good things, rich things, not not just mad or outraged or happy, complex stuff that has multiple notes and flavors and hints and aftertastes like a, a, a sip of complex wine. And it just, it was too much. I just started bawling sitting at my desk and I know I do that too much but I just did and then my little girl comes back and she she I mean exactly at that moment she comes in and I'm sitting here at my desk head down crying and she just came and sat on my lap and kind of rocked back and forth and she didn't be like what's wrong she knew nothing was wrong she just knew I was feeling something she's like I love you daddy and so I just sat there and I just held her and cried a little bit music is so wonderful what a gift, what a blessing, what an amazing thing that vibration organized neatly can convey so much meaning so fast, can can draw out dead, long lost emotions and feelings and uh, and moments and bring them all back to you in one instant, just the right way. And I'm so glad I felt that. And I'm so glad that music is going to unwrap those emotions from the past and the future and the, the present moment for me for my whole life. All of that is to say thank you for swapping songs with me. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things to do with friends is to be like, hey, this makes me feel stuff and I don't really want to feel it alone. And if you don't feel it, it's cool. But by swapping music, it's like a chance to cross pollinate the awesome. And I like all your songs, but that Little Chief song, thank you. Yeah. That is a gift. I never would have found it. I like your you. songs too. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some of these 80s, like I'm probably going to get some neon sunglasses yeah the kind with like louvers yes and maybe a mm -hmm. mesh mm -hmm. tank top and mm -hmm. i'm just gonna listen to all these maybe rent a lamborghini countach countach well, one thing when you're talking about music that i got to thinking about is the fact that it transcends language and that everybody can connect and there's something about a temporal beat mm, 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 or whatever it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's some kind of clock in our brains mm-hmm and everyone has that same clock. So it makes me wonder what is it in the human psyche that vibrates at a certain frequency? That that I don't know, that's something that I think about a lot. We've talked about this before, but I think part of the beauty of music is that it can instantly tap into that thing that is the source of so many of our emotions, our soul, which is tied to mortality and that is temporary. And those beautiful little girls that I'm trying to raise right now and that joyful little boy, that's only right now. That'll never happen again with those humans and that combination of who they are and what they are and what they've experienced and me as a dad and Camilla as a mom. That thing, that beautiful moment that's happening right now for us as five people and a chinchilla is never <laughs> going to happen again. And it will be over and not like over because of death. It'll just be over because of time. And then there'll be maybe a next beautiful thing, but it's that ticking clock and, and that ticking clock and the idea of that beat that you just mentioned, that there's this rhythm, this thump, this tick that goes on in our head. 
I think all that stuff is connected somehow in a very deep, visceral way. But this is what's neat to me. We've only had the ability to record audio for a very short amount of time, right? Yeah. Since the 1800s yeah. with a wax cylinder. And so you can record this audio now and share it and project it forward. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab all the air and the ambiance around me, and I'm going to just crush my hands uh -huh. together. Uh -huh. And when I do that, what's going to happen uh -huh. is I'm going to create a singularity, and that <gasps> singularity is this moment of feeling uh -huh. of connection between two friends and their music. Yeah. And I'm going to capture it, and we're just going to send it forward into the future. Are you ready? I feel that with you. Please do it. Well, you have to do it on your side, too, because we have to capture the amb ambiance in both rooms. Ready? Three, two, one.